Hello, I'm Daniel. And I'm Alan. And we are here to talk to you about advanced authentication. Um, so far, we've done some uh, basic videos on what is identity. Uh, we did what is basic authentication. And now we're going to talk about advanced authentication. Some of the cool things you can do with this, authentication. So, so what is advanced authentication? Well, it covers a multitude of things. But one of the things about it, let's go back to the login page we looked at earlier. Mm -hmm. right? One of the challenges we've got is that we might have an application, maybe a banking application, mm -hmm. and it's got some specific requirements as to how it authenticates the user. Mm -hmm. The out-of-the-box module doesn't do that. Yeah. Right? So we need to provide a way for that to be developed, whether it's an SI or by a customer. So, so in the context of Daniel, in the basic authentication world, I go to the app, the app routes me to the identity system, the identity system has me log in, and then it sends the result back to the app and either gives me access or doesn't. And what Correct. you're saying is sometimes there are cases where we need other ways of authenticating in addition to that sign-on in order to get access to that app. But exactly the same thing happens. Daniel goes to the app, it goes to the identity system, and then some magic happens to determine what do I need to do to identify Daniel? What are the steps I need what to go through? What are the steps I need to go okay. through, right? So, so what are some examples? If it, it may be the case where it, it makes me still put in my ID and password, but then it may have me do what? What are some examples of things? Um, some of the common ones we've seen out are, are maybe it needs to capture a, a, an account number or something like that, or a secret pin. Mm -hmm. um, I know in my bank it's got a picture of, I can't tell you what's on there because then you'd know, mm -hmm. but it's got a picture that I have to identify. It's a windmill. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to change it. But it has these additional steps, uh -huh. right? And those pieces are what these authentication module are there to provide. Okay. Right. So, so like what multi-factor authentication is one. Right. Well, multi-factor authentication brings up a really interesting kind of use case, right? Because multi-factor says, if I determine who you are, mm -hmm. is it more secure for me to maybe determine the same thing in a different way? Okay. Right. So you may, I may determine who you are using a username and password. Yep. Right? If I send a text message to your mobile device mm -hmm. and you are able to give me that number, I'm now fairly certain that it's you because it's not only do you know the secret password, but you also have that device. Yeah. Right? That gives us what a multi-factor authentication comes down to. So in that case, the identity system, you go to the app, the app routes you to the identity system, you actually put in your ID and password, and then there's some kind of auth module that we provide that sends you off to my, my two-dimensional mobile app. Apple's got it thinner than ever, um, where I can put in my, my simple pin. Absolutely. Okay. And then the same thing happens. It all comes back to the app and says, this is Daniel. Okay. So uh, do we just only have uh, um, auth modules for mobile phones? or? Are there more? There's any number of auth modules, and 25 of them to date, and, and new ones happen all the time. Okay. It just depends on how you want to authenticate that. So it user. could be a thumbprint on a mouse, it could be an eye scan, it could Absolutely. be anything. It could be a digital certificate, it could be um, some other kind of hardware device that you may be issued, any, okay. any number of those things. And so we, you mentioned there's 25 out of box, but what if there's one we want to plug into that we don't support? There is no... Doing well, that's what the authentication modules are there for. Right. So they, they're very easy to develop. By very easy, I mean a good developer can do one in a few days. Mm -hmm. And you can hook that into the identity system very easily. So it's easy to extend. Okay. So is, does risk play into this at all? It can. Okay. Right? So one of the things you may want to do is that if you have to go through this complex login process every time you log into a service, mm -hmm. eventually it gets to be a real pain. Right? You don't right. want to do that. So what would be really nice is to be able to say, look, it says it's Daniel, it's from the same machine, in the same address, yeah, it's probably you. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to go through this high authentication steps in order to verify. However, if you log in from Bulgaria, mm -hmm. maybe the identity system at that point should say, huh, Daniel's not normally in Bulgaria. I want to be able to go through the additional steps. So the, the system can be pretty smart, just like we have a credit score. It can kind of keep track of certain data points to build a credit score on you that decides, do we send them off for that authentication, additional authentication, or do we not? We not. I mean, a very common one is, have you made a mistake logging into this account before? Mm -hmm. right? If somebody's tried to hack into your account, or you've forgotten the password, maybe we want to do the full 
authentication step. Yep. But if you're logging in day after day from the same place, we want to lower the friction. Yeah, I see this a lot where if I'm logging into an app for the first time and it's never seen me before, it might make me register a phone or something to the app. And, but you and don't want to register the phone every single time, right. right? You just want to do it once. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I guess last, uh, last question I have is, um, does it always have to be about risk or can it also be about reducing friction, reducing barriers, making them go through less steps? They tie together quite closely, right? So there's a lot of things that you have on an application that are not inherently risky. Mm -hmm. So yes, you can lower the friction and let people like Amazon, for example, allow you to go and browse the store mm -hmm. without actually having to log in. Yep. It's only when you want to buy something that they say now you've got to actually authenticate. Right. So that's that kind of step, right? You can lower the friction to have people interact and then raise the authentication when you actually need it or when it becomes a risky step. So that's, that's cool. In, in the case of Daniel, which is a, a wonderful picture of me, if I hit the app, it hits the identity system and it sees that the risk level and the value of the transaction is just so low that it's, it's very low risk, it might completely bypass the login and just let me do a touch ID and I'm in. Absolutely. That's awesome. Cool. Well, thank you, Alan. That, I think that helps with advanced authentication. Um, our next video, we're going to talk about federation. Okay, thank you. Cut.